but crashed Japan on the 11th of every month since April 2019, groups of sexual violence victims and their supporters have gathered in public spaces. Holding bunches of flowers, they tell their stories to protest against unjust acquittals. The flower demonstrations are smaller than some of the actions that have been seen globally under the banner of hashtag MeToo, but they have become a constant across all of Japan, even during COVID-19. My name is Emerald King and I am a lecturer in Japanese at the University of La Trobe in Melbourne. While the MeToo movement gained traction and media attention in 2017 after Hollywood actresses picked up the war cry on Twitter, it actually dates to a 2006 MySpace page posted by activist Tarana Burke. Since Weinstein was jailed in March after being convicted of sexual assault and rape, the movement has arguably lost some of its voice across social media. But Weinstein was never the target of the original hashtag, nor was he at the centre of it in spaces such as China, Indonesia, South Korea or Japan. In countries such as Japan, where speaking out as an individual can be detrimental to the victim, Me Too was never really going to gain much traction. We Too was a slogan that was suggested. By replacing me with we, the slogan We Too allows women to contribute to the movement without having to speak of their own experience with sexual harassment. In 2017, a number of Japanese women came forward on social media to express their own experiences, only to be met with a flood of abuse and victim blaming. Despite laws and social movements to assure the rights of women in the workplace, such as the government's recent Womenomics, which was meant to promote women's greater inclusion in the workforce, Japan has not done enough to address its procedural, legal and government responsibilities in protecting women or any victims of rape and harassment. Because sexual harassment is not considered a crime in Japan, it remains a private matter and crime statistics do not capture the full extent of sexual harassment and abuse, especially of minors. It was only as recent as 2017 that the rape laws were amended for the first time since 1907 to include anal and oral rape, and to include male victims of rape. Because the legal definition of rape is so narrow, it is very hard to prosecute perpetrators for anything that is outside of that strict definition. Sexual harassment and assault and rape are on a spectrum, but the law only considers the most violent and aggressive form at the very end of that spectrum, rape with the use of force. There are three instances which best exemplify the Me Too movement in Japan. Firstly, the Flower Demo is a nationwide grassroots movement that is built on earlier Me Too protests and which was triggered by outrage over consecutive district court acquittals in March 2019 in four sexual assault cases. In one case, the judge doubted a child's allegations of paternal rape, stating that a family member would have noticed. The first demonstrations were held in Tokyo and Osaka in 2019 after feminist activist and author Minori Kitahara called for them on social media. Secondly, at the end of 2019, the word kutu was awarded one of the top 10 runner-up places in Japan's annual Best New and Buzzwords Award. Hashtag kutu is a clever triple wordplay that combines me too, kutsu meaning shoes, and kutsu meaning agony. Coined in February 2019 by activist and pinup model Yumi Ishikawa, Kutu aims at the expected and accepted gender norms that see Japanese women crippling themselves in high heels as part of their official workwear. At the end of 2019, Japan Rail released new uniforms with trousers and low-heeled shoes for both men and women, while as recently as March this year, Japan Airlines has offered their predominantly female cabin attendants the choice of flat shoes. Ishikawa was listed as one of the BBC's 100 Most Influential Women of 2019. Lastly, and arguably the face of Me Too in Japan, is Shiori Ito. In 2015, Ito was raped by her senior colleague and mentor Noriyuki Yamaguchi. Despite video evidence to support her claims, he denied them and they were initially dismissed amongst rumours of government intervention. Yamaguchi is linked closely to Prime Minister Abe. In May 2017, Ito held a press conference and forwarded a request to the Committee for the Inquest of Prosecution to review her case. A sexual assault victim braving the cold glares of cameras and media speculation was incredibly rare in Japan, where rape is still the victim's fault or responsibility rather than the perpetrator's. 
In October of that same year, Ito published Black Box, which told her side of the story. She was eventually able to file a civil lawsuit in October, and on December 18, 2019, the Tokyo District Court ruled in her favour. It has been argued that any voices in Japan raised to say Me Too would be silenced, but those women and men who are claiming their voices at flower demos across Japan prove that this simply is not the case. The flower demos state that their flowers mean, we are with you, we are by your side, we are here for you. 